So to continue on these light equations, now that we've used c equals lambda nu to solve for both the wavelength and for the frequency, what if we add energy into the mix? So let's come back to our favorite radio station, and you can use whichever one you would like to use. And let's ask what energy is carried by a single photon from your favorite radio station. So the key for this equation, E equals H nu, is that this is only for a single photon. And so if you ever see a question where it's asking for a mole of photons, or it's giving you an energy per mole, then you always have to take that back to a single photon so that you can use this equation. Otherwise, it won't really work unless you're considering a single photon. So if we say our favorite radio station again is 93.9 Bob FM, well then this is at 93.9 megahertz or 10 to the sixth inverse seconds. And so the energy equals Planck's constant times 93.9 times 10 to the sixth inverse seconds and when you multiply through this is 6.22 times 10 to the minus 26 joules this is a, of course a tiny amount of energy because we're not really talking about a whole lot of energy in terms of a single photon even a mole of photons of radio waves are not going to carry more than say a millijoule of energy this is a tiny amount of energy this is one reason why uh, low intensity radio waves pass through us all the time and they have no negative effects on us because they're not considered to be ionizing radiation because the amount of energy carried by a single photon is not even on the scale not even on the order of energy necessary to ionize electrons from atoms or from molecules so if we stick with using this equation now and we stick with e equals h nu and the question is for a single photon to have an energy of 1.00 joules what frequency must it have so the one joule equals 6.626 times 10 to the negative 34th joules times seconds and then this is times the frequency so divide both sides by the 6.626 times 10 to the negative 34th joules times seconds and then it cancels out and you're left with the frequency and the frequency equals 1.51 times 10 to the 33rd inverse seconds. This is a huge frequency for a single photon to have this much energy. It would be in the region where we would call them cosmic rays. Notice that when you look at the left side of this expression, the joules in the numerator and the denominator cancel out and you're left with seconds in the denominator, which is why you have inverse seconds as the units on your answer. Finally, let's put this together with C equals lambda nu. And thinking about combining those e two equations, let's come back to the green laser and ask, what is the energy of a single photon at 532 nanometers? Go ahead and pause the video here and try and combine the two equations E equals H nu and C equals lambda nu so that you can solve for energy in terms of wavelength. In the long run, when you solve for frequency using the first equation of light, C equals lambda nu, and you plug that into the equation for energy, it does not matter how you end up expressing that, how you write that fraction. These both mean the same thing. So now go ahead and pause this video and plug in the values that you know. 
when you plug in the values that you know, don't forget to express nanometers as meters, and you can use 10 to the negative ninth for that nano prefix. Looking at the units that are here, we have joules times seconds times meters over seconds, so these seconds will cancel out. And we have meters in the numerator and meters in the denominator, which cancel out. So we're left with joules, which are the expected unit for energy. And for this green laser, a single photon carries 3.73 times 10 to the negative 19th joules. Now, the interesting thing for this green laser, thinking about atomic structure and electrons, is that this scale of energy starts to become on the same scale as the electron energy levels in particular atoms. And so if there's an electron where there's a gap of this energy or a gap that's a little bit smaller than this energy, then this green photon could be absorbed by that electron and that electron could be excited within the atom. This also happens within molecules as electrons and molecules also exist in energy levels.